<laughs> we are at the Lake Zurich and uh, going across with this ferry. I live close to here. Uh, it's half an hour from Zurich or half an hour from airport and maybe 15 minutes from Zurich and uh, it's just relaxed and this is very beautiful, clean country. I came in Switzerland when I was with Sauber the first time and then uh, when I moved from Sauber to West McLaren Mercedes I, I stayed here because I know the area and it's a good, good place to live. Many drivers are living in Monaco and uh, for me this is much better. It's more like in Finland, there's more space and uh, I think there's more things to do here than it's in Monaco. Mountain biking is good here. The air is very fresh and uh, it's a good place to go. It's uphills, downhills and in the forest there's it's, it's many different areas where you, where you can do mountain biking and uh, it's good. The job of a trainer is actually quite broad. I mean, obviously it involves the physical fitness, so cardiovascular work, gym work, stability work, etc. Also, we look after the nutritional side and all the aspects that go with that at races, at tests, and obviously while we're training. We also look after them from a therapy point of view, so the sports massage work, stretching, etc. When we come to racing and testing, the, the role then broadens to mainly looking after them while they're there. So the idea from my point of view is to make sure that while I'm working with Kimmy he doesn't have to worry about where his crash helmet's going to be, where his earplugs are, if he's got his favourite gloves. I look after all of that so that all he has to do is then get into the car and drive. Basically you need your whole body needs to be strong when you're driving but it's, it's more on, uh, on your hands and upper body and neck area what is the most, uh, most strongness needs to be on, on driving wise. Of course you need to be strong stomach and back to keep yourself in a good place in the car but I think so the neck area is the most important. Fantastic, good set. It's difficult to train your neck really on any other ways than driving, that's the best, uh, best training for it and uh, we at least uh, some of the testing circuits we go on uh, anti lock wise quite a bit and uh, that's good training for, for the neck and uh, Actually, it's better now when the Brussels is not the third race, it's, it's, I think it's just the last race and your neck is so strong at the end of the year anyhow that you don't, you don't feel too much anymore. We work obviously on a core strength element of the training in the gym and we try and make it as stability orientated as possible because in a Formula One car you going through a lot of g-force um, in a very small enclosed environment and the joints are under a lot of stress and the whole aim really is to make sure the driver is problem free injury prevention so a lot of the work we do in the gym is on stability balls whereby we're training muscles that you wouldn't really see but that are doing a lot of work to stabilize the shoulders the hips the spine the neck and we try and encompass that into the overall program without the driver really knowing that's exactly what we're doing but it just adds a fun element into the training Adding the rotation with a weight really just works the same muscles you're working in the car to a certain degree but in a stationary point of view. So it's just a way of combining something very specific with something stability orientated and your brain has to cope with more than one thing. Working with a driver, you can be physically fit, you can be as fit as you can be, but if you're mentally not there, then you're never going to perform well in a car or in any sport to be quite honest. The mental side is huge. When I look at him, I see what mood he's in, and obviously I design a program that we work around, but that program is flexible, so there's always alternatives you can do to the program you have planned. we will still achieve the same objectives. So if I see that he's not really in a mood to go into a gym, then we do something else. It will still achieve similar objectives, but just in a slightly different way, because sometimes you want to make something more fun, sometimes you, you want to do something that appeals to him. It depends on the day. Sometimes you feel like you like to do something with the, with the weights or some other days you feel like to do biking or swimming or something else and it really it's okay, all the stuff, but uh, some, some days you just feel, feel more like, like doing something else.
after the test, yeah, massage is good on the next day and just try to relax really and uh, if you do something you should do some uh, light stuff. Working on the body itself, um, your hands tend to work very much like sonar when you're working on the body and you pick up what areas are tight, what areas need work and um, it's useful to then transfer that into what you're doing into the gym. You can, you can feel where areas need to be worked out more. From a driving point of view, it's quite specific. So most drivers go through the same um, experience in a car. So generally speaking, what you're going to find in the body will be fairly standard. This area obviously works very hard in the Formula One car because you've got to keep your neck or head pretty much in the centre of the car. So when you're going around a corner, your head wants to go one way and you've got to try and stop it and under 4G where your head weighs four times as much as it normally would, plus with the weight of the helmet. It's obviously going under quite a lot of stress to all these muscles after the driving, especially if you've done a lot of laps. You tend to get a little bit tight. Just on the top of the shoulder blade here, we've got the Vata scapula, which starts the top of the shoulder blade and ends in the top of the head. Again, a muscle that works really hard when the drive's in the car. It gets very tight around its attachment, so just try and loosen that off a little bit. Generally speaking, as I said before, you, you're doing more laps at a test than you would in a race, so there is a lot of work that needs to be done. I guess I'm like him, I just try to do my job as effectively as possible and do the best I can for him. He works hard at his fitness, he loves his sport, but what he has is that natural talent and that can never be taken away from him. So the whole combination is, creates a very strong package. Basically, if you become the F1 driver or any top race driver, you, you need to do quite a lot of fitness because it's part of the life now and uh, you get used to it and then you just feel better afterwards. And, uh, okay, maybe on, on the time when you're doing something in the gym, it's not the most nicest feeling sometimes, but afterwards it's, it's very nice. When Kimi won his first race, I had the same feeling as when Mika won his first championship. It, it's a feeling of seeing someone young come through and that's the, the first goal he has, to win a race, and then on from there to win a championship. So it's the first piece of the puzzle has been achieved. And it's a fantastic feeling, it, it makes your job worthwhile.